Somebody snap a picture. Thank you. Too much glare? <laughs> Always. Thank you. I was worried about five or something. Nice job. Hello. Uh, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm here as a speaker for the indigenous microorganisms. And so, um, really, my, my mission, my, my message is that your soil is nothing without life. You know, if you're just mining your soil and you're just taking out all the nutrients, you will quickly perish. And so, the way to create sustainable soil or plant practices is the soil. You know, it starts with the soil, then you get healthy plants, then you have healthy animals, then you have healthy humans. So if you want health in your plants, your animals, or us, we gotta start with the soil. And when I talk about healthy soil, I'm talking about living soil. So what I've been doing and exploring is very simple methods to go to our forests, our rich uh, areas, and to gather microorganisms, as grab their seeds then to propagate them, and then to activate them for your local soil so that you can get vast, um, rich, abundant harvests where you are. So where, where are you harvesting the, uh, in the forest? What, what area in the forest are you harvesting your microorganisms? Uh, some, of the, some of the best microorganisms to harvest are in your same um, climate region. So you don't want to bring microbes from very far away. You want to gather, gather the indigenous ones from your same climate region and then just slightly higher altitude. You guys from Colorado will know training at high altitude makes you much faster when you run at low altitude. And same is true for these microorganisms. So a little bit higher altitude, you bring them down, look for a rich, nice forest around you and gather those. Those are gonna be your, your elders. Your, they have the wisdom. They've been operating in that environment for generations. So those are the guys you want. So for the people here that don't know exactly what you're talking about regarding where. Where in the, in the forest area are you gathering these microorganisms? So, so when, you, when you go into the forest, you look for the healthiest part um, and under the biggest trees. And when you part the forest duff away, you're gonna see um, mycelia, these white strands throughout the soil. And really the best microbes are right between the forest duff and on the very surface of the soil. Those guys are in the aerobic zone, and those guys are the big soil microorganisms that you want to gather. To answer your question, Doug, basically you go up into the forest, you use a starch source and a container, you collect the fractal copy of your mycorrhiza and your forest microorganisms, and you can bring that down, and you can either take that directly and make liquid compost tea, which now you're using your indigenous microorganisms in your area, so you can just follow a standard recipe, or you can go and learn more about Korean natural farming where we use very precise plant extracts and amino acids and all these other fancy formulas. But just as a quick way to do it, gather your, your indigenous microbes with starch and then make a standard compost tea. And the, the benefit to that for hemp and all this is that it's liquid-based and many of our farms already have our spray equipment already intact on your farm. So there's abs like literally just cost you basically starch and your time to go gather it. And other than that, you're, you're good to go. So I'll elaborate more on that during the lunch break. Question is, do you, for Drake, is do you know any difference in the um, uh, biological fungal or, or bacterial uh, association? Fungal or bacterial yeah. association with cannabis? Uh, there, there's a few plants out there that, that have these amazing relationships because what they do is they take sunlight and exude it in their roots. One of those is um, uh, bamboo, the other is banana, but the third one is hemp. And this may be one of the reasons we don't have to fertilize it as much, is if you pull up the hemp plant and you look at its rhizosphere, its root zone, it's just loaded with microorganisms. It's so abundant. and so. They may be naturally synthesizing and breaking down compounds and reducing the toxin load by, by disassembling and reassembling plants. So there is a fungal association, there is a bacterial association, but in the camp, like that hemp plant itself, it's just phenomenal diversity and populations. 
just naturally. Well, um, I, I actually wouldn't mind seeing it count as a monograph. One, one of the powers of indigenous microorganisms is that you're gathering this diversity from the forest and then bringing it down. And the reason monocrops damage the land is usually you're growing one crop and it's putting out a single exudate and you're then narrowing your biology down so it can't free up other nutrients that you need. But when you incorporate the indigenous microorganisms, the plant in the soil has no idea that these microbes don't actually belong there. So when you go into researches, like you look up uh, Vince Brock Gabe Browning, who's uh, doing diverse polycultures in South Dakota, and he's doing amazing work. And so I think there is benefit to always having polycultures above because it's less work for you as a, to create this artificial environment. But if you're always speaking diverse biology and you're always inoculating your soil, for better or for worse, your soil doesn't know. And those microbes are able to go out and solubilize all the nutrients that are necessary. So, so I would say it's, it's very important to soil test before because that way, when you're, you don't add any of the traditional things to your land and your crop starts growing, you're going to really blow people's minds. Because if you don't soil test in the beginning, and then later when your stuff's fertile, people won't believe you that you just started with where you started. So in my mind, the, what you can do with your land is one of the easiest ways to remineralize your land is to use diluted seawater. So if you're lacking anything, you can take seawater, dilute it one to 30, put it on your land. You now have every single trace mineral. And here, that's a really cheap solution, but there's products like C90, C80, I forget what the number is, but those things are desalinized salt, sea salt minerals. And that's a pretty inexpensive way in Colorado to do this as well. Um, and the fertility of your land versus thinking in a chemical lens. Like Vince said, there's like billions of particles of clay in each um, grain of sand. Is that um, you get the biology in there, they break it apart using different acids and different alkaline material, and they actually create the fertility. The other part to that is the carbon component. And when you get biology, you get carbon in your soil, then that starts to synthesize all the nitrogens and if you're lacking anything, again, the, the sea salt, or taking your crop, fermenting it, the one you're growing, fermenting it, and then reapplying it to your land so that you're now creating a cycle and you're not having nutrient loss. And it's a great way to start accumulating and feeding your whole crop. So there's a lot of methods that, that we use that are biologically driven to help build soil. And there's a lot of ways to get there, um, but I'm pretty stoked that working with Vince and Kimo, that we found ways that are inexpensive, that are ecologically friendly, and when we have runoff come off our farms, our, our neighbors benefit. So just think about that one. Right on, Drake. So anyway, thank you very much. I want to thank James and Drake and Mahalo and my great time.